You step out in front of a large audience and they look at you expectantly. You want to speak up, but the room is full of experts. You feel stupid. You want to ask a question, but you feel your heart pounding in your chest and you worry your voice will shake. Someone asks you a question and everyone goes silent. You can't think of an answer. You have a camera pointed in your face and you have to say something intelligent off the cuff. You can probably draw on any number of these moments in your memory. Seared into my brain is the memory of a stage in a huge hall where I went badly wrong in front of a thousand people. I vowed afterwards that I would never speak on a stage again. It took me a while to rebuild my confidence and it still makes me cringe to think about it now. But though you can feel very alone in those moments, you really aren't. This fear is human. Nerves are normal. On a daily basis, clients recount memories of embarrassment, fear and vulnerability as speakers. And I hear these stories from all ages, from school children to people who run global businesses and lead countries. For example, an executive told me that she remembers the moment she stepped up to give a speech at school, no notes in hand as her dad told her to learn it by heart. But she forgot her words and everyone laughed. She decided that speaking was risky and that belief followed her for years in a highly successful career. But though these moments connect us all, so does our capacity to learn from them and to improve. The executive can now say with quiet pride that many years on from her school disaster, she's graced stages in front of thousands of people, feeling in control and enjoying the experience. And hand on heart, I can tell you that speaking with confidence is learned, not innate. There's no such thing as a born speaker. It's what you do day in, day out that makes you confident. It's not who you are. For 30 years, I wasn't a confident speaker. I rushed, I shook, I worried. But steadily, using the steps I'm going to show you, I found that my confidence as a speaker grew. The word abracadabra, that old favourite of magicians pulling rabbits out of hats, actually comes from the Hebrew, meaning I will create as I speak. Finding your voice is a kind of magic. The moment you feel the easy power of your voice release from deep in your body. The moment you discover you have the power to walk out in the spotlight and find your way home to calm no matter what. To know your voice won't shake. To know that you can harness the adrenaline rather than dread it. To know that when you need to fill a room, there's no need to shout. As a speaker, I started to find a new normal which allowed me to feel calm and controlled when I spoke. I found that I could step up to stages and audiences that felt daunting and handle the situation. And as a teacher, I relish the moment when voices transform like plants unfurling in a summer garden. It makes my job a joy. And I want you to flourish in the same way too. When you handle these moments well, doors open, word gets around, your life changes. And when you're speaking up for ideas bigger than you, you change the lives of others too. And that's where it gets really interesting. Made, not born. If you want an example of a confident speaker who was made, not born, look no further than the ancient world's role model for overcoming voice impediments, Demosthenes. Born in Athens in 384 BC, Demosthenes was not a natural speaker. He was physically weak as a child, and he had a bad stutter. His first attempts at speaking in public were a disaster. He was jeered out of the assembly. But he was determined. He set out to find his voice. He put pebbles in his mouth to help him speak clearly. Please don't try this at home. He practised in front of a shield polished as a mirror. He ran up hills to strengthen his lungs. His confidence and his voice grew until he became one of the most respected speakers of his time. 